What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today at the Durbin Compound, we are sealing the garage floor. Now, I did an acetone dye project and it went horribly wrong. Um, the sealer, I didn't get the sealer off the original concrete enough. Um, I chose to not mechanically grind it. I chose to do a, uh, a chemical uh, etching and the etching did not make it happen. So I had to mechanically remove that sealer uh, and, and start over the whole project. So I ended up with going with a polycuremine coating. Um, it is a uh, basically a blend. It's kind of like an epoxy, but it does a lot better. And I put it down. This is vessel gray. It matches all of the other um, trim and the ceiling here in the garage. And so now what I'm doing is I'm putting down a urethane, urethane sealer and uh, I'm going to attempt to show you, uh, try to show you a good video on exactly how you do it um, to eliminate lines and stuff like that in your coating when you're done with it. So as you can tell behind me, um, I've done a little bit of the floor so far uh, and I'm going to continue on and hopefully show you uh, um, a way about it that uh, will make it good and streak free for you. So first and foremost, uh, I'm using a lamb's wool applicator. This is one made by Minwax. Um, I got this at the local Lowe's. Um, it has a uh, changeable head on it. You just undo the, the wing nuts and then you can uh, remove the lamb's wool applicator and put a new one on. So I'm using a regular paint tray. Um, this is supposedly a nine or a 10 inch lamb's wool, but it fits perfectly in this nine inch tray. So, uh, as you can see, I'm, I've been going down on the floor. Uh, I'm on my second coat here, so you can see the first coat and how it's, uh, how it's dried like this. Uh, it's not fully cured yet. I'm in my recoat time of four hours, so I waited four hours and then I'm recoating again. So as you can tell on the rest of the floor, you cannot tell where my marks are here, um, and that's because I'm using a crosshatch pattern on my second coat. So let me, uh, let me load this lamb's wool applicator up and I will show you exactly how I'm doing. All right, so basically what I want to do here with the lamb's wool applicator is back and forth in uh, one direction to match my, previous, uh, to match my previous direction. And then what we'll do is you can see where it's getting thick on the ends. Um, you obviously want to be uh, a little cognizant of that on your project. Uh, you can see uh, you just try to work out some of the bigger, uh, you know, the heavier spots in your pattern. So after I'm done with that, we'll move over to this direction here and we will go this way. So kind of eliminating that end here where it was thick and then also coming crosshatch on our pattern and making those lines disappear. As you guys can tell, this is one heck of a workout and it does get hot in the garage. Um, you need to put the doors down. Um, if it's spring like this and you know spring is sneezing on your floor, try to put the garage door down as much as possible to keep stuff from blowing in. Um, I hope that guys, I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, if you're doing a similar project, you're trying to figure out how to lay sealer or something that needs to be pretty darn good for your application and make sure that it doesn't streak or anything crazy like that. Just remember cross hatchet. Um, how I applied mine was I applied the first coat very heavy and then I waited four hours, the maximum recoat time. And then I'm gonna do two thin coats after that. So I'm on my second thin coat and you can see I cross hatched my second thin coat and that will allow it to dry in a great pattern where you can't see any streaking. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video as always, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.